As we follow the signal along through the microphone, it gets converted into electrical energy. And usually then, we plug in the microphone into an XLR cable, a three-pronged cable. And that cable gets plugged into some type of console. It could be a large format analog console, could be a digital console. You saw um, in your reading some pictures of some analog consoles. I also have some here. Here's a large format analog console, an API 1608. Not a very good picture, but you can see a lot of knobs and a lot of faders. These are the faders, and these are individual knobs. OK, here is another console, analog console. This is a Rupert Neve design, analog console. OK, now one thing you'll notice about these is that they have a lot of faders, a lot of buttons, and it looks like I can never learn this. It's very confusing. Well, one of the things that's important to realize is that there's really not that much that's complex about a console. It's just one channel strip or one individual channel that's repeated multiple times. Okay, in the instance here of our picture, okay, there is one channel. This is the channel right here. All, this is channel 1. If we go to the next channel, that's channel 2. Can't really follow the lines very well, but you get the idea. That's channel 2. So essentially, these knobs and buttons and faders all do the same thing all the way across this console. They just do it for individual microphones. So that's what we're going to diagram first, is a basic channel strip. This is the channel strip. If you looked on the back of this console, you would see that there is an XLR jack where you would plug your microphone into one of these individual channels. OK, so back to our diagram. Here's our microphone, which is a transducer. It can be one of three types. And here's our XLR cable, and we come over here to the back of our recording console. All right, there's our channel strip <coughs> from our large format analog console. Now, the first device that we come to in a analog console is something we call a microphone preamp. Now. The microphone preamp also has some additional names. Sometimes people will just call it a pre, or other times mic, or some people will call it a mic pre. Now, a mic pre has a specific function that it does to our audio signal. Think about the audio signal that's coming from that microphone, and it's come from a small little diaphragm that's this size actually much smaller than that inside, probably the size of a dime or smaller. How much electrical energy do you think that actually creates when it's converting our sound or airwaves into electrical signals? The answer is not much. OK, so we have a very weak signal or electrical wave that's being transmitted over this XLR microphone cable. So when it gets to the microphone preamp, the microphone preamp's job is to gain up or increase the volume of that signal so that we can do something with it. So every, every microphone preamp will have a gain knob, volume knob, something to turn up the gain. volume or gain control, OK? Now, the other thing that a microphone preamp may have would be a button right here. And this is a specific type of button. It supplies a certain kind of power that's required for a certain type of microphone. It supplies the power for a condenser microphone, OK? And that power is called? 48 volt 
or phantom power. I thought I would show you here some of my microphone preamps. You can see here's the gain control. Here's the gain control. These are all different types. Here's the gain control, gain control. These are all different types of preamps, but they all have similarities. They all have gain control, and they also have 48 volt. 48 volt here, 48 volt there, phantom power that's used to power condenser microphones. One of the other things that microphone preamps do is that they tend to color the sound. You notice that when I showed you pictures of all of my different microphone preamps, I had four, five, six different brands of microphone preamps. Each microphone preamp changes or colors the sound slightly differently. Um, some microphone preamps are really clean and pristine and are great for real quiet sources. Other microphone preamps tend to give you a lot of attitude in the sound. They add some grit or gravel to the sound that they are amplifying. And those might be good for, you know, a vocal or guitars or drums, something like that. Tube microphone preamps tend to be tend to be real warm and chocolatey uh, sounding. So, you know, that would maybe be great for a vocal or a bass guitar or something like that. So each microphone preamp will color the sound differently um, and will allow you to use it on a, a source that you feel is appropriate. The next area that I wanted to discuss with you is called inserts. Now, traditionally on analog consoles, an insert was a hardware device. That's what we're showing right here. There were a couple of types of inserts that would be inserted onto each channel of the console. And the two most common types of inserts were EQ or equalization, and compression. Okay, well, so what is EQ? EQ is the ability to alter certain frequencies of your audio stream or within your audio channel strip. Um, so you can pick a certain frequency and you can either reduce it or add it to the sound you're looking for. Uh, basically, EQ is the bass, mid-range, and treble frequency knobs that you have on your, you know, an old-fashioned stereo system. Um, on your iPhone or iPad or uh, any of your smartphones, you'll have EQ that you're able to apply to the music that you're playing. So maybe you want to add the bass, add more bass on your smartphone, or maybe you want to add some treble or reduce some mid-range. Those are all functions of EQ. So you're able to add or reduce frequencies. That's what EQ does. Okay, now we also mentioned compression. Okay, so what's compression? Well, just the word compression tells us something about it. We're actually going to compress something. So let's take, for example, the air that's in this room. If I decide I want to compress the air in this room, what I'm going to do is either raise the floor or drop the ceiling and make the room smaller. So we're going to compress the air inside the room. Well, in the case of music, we're not really compressing the air, we're compressing the dynamic range of the actual instrument that's recorded or being recorded. Okay, so compression is a way to raise the floor or drop the ceiling of an audio signal. Okay, let's talk about that real quick. Let's say we have a vocalist and we have recorded them and in the verse they are very soft and in the chorus they're very loud okay so what we want to do is we want to reduce the dynamic range if this is how high the louds are and this is how low the soft parts are 
we want to raise the soft parts to be here and we want to reduce the loud parts to be here so that the louds and softs are closer together, a reduced dynamic range. We do that with a device called a compressor. That's what compression does, is it reduces the audio range or the dynamic range of an audio signal. One of the things about inserts that is important to note is that an insert affects the whole signal. In other words, as your audio stream is coming down through that channel strip right here, everything that passes through this insert gets affected 100%. Okay, All of the signal is affected by the inserts that you have on your channel strip. In this case, EQ and compression.